think a lot here. Uh, it's been a little while and a lot has happened. I mean, we got a new Xenoblade 3 trailer, so of course I'm going to be breaking it down today. But before I do that, I want to thank everybody for a thousand subscribers. It's absolutely crazy, never thought I'd be saying that. I'm not going to lie and say this is like life changing or anything, but it, it is really, um, I am really grateful. Uh, and it means a lot to me that you guys like my content as much. I know I haven't been uploading a huge amount. I have got exams coming up. Um, so I'll probably upload more in the summer. So I know I didn't have a release schedule anyway, but it's probably going to be a little whack lately. Hope you guys are okay with that. Um, but today I just wanted to break down this trailer. I've got some of like the websites and additional information to help me basically talk about what, we, what we're going to see. Uh, so yeah, let's get straight to it. Okay, so we got this chick. Um, she reminds me a lot of Cosmos from Xenosaga. I haven't actually played that, but I, I know some stuff about it. Uh, the main thing here is that she's got like a, a red eye, uh, and we'll see that with another character later on. Uh, and and I, I'm i wondering if she's possessed by the fog, like the fog beast from Future Connected, uh, if, they're, if they've like corrupted her. What was I going to show? I'm not sure. I remember seeing somewhere, I think this is her here. I remember seeing somewhere that her name was Ethel. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but let's have a look. Maybe this has got some information. You can see her here. I think this is, this is definitely artwork of her. She's got the, um, that same, like, mysterious insignia on her chest. Uh, was not sure who she is. Got a lot of information here. Um, well, I'm going to continue with the trailer for now. So she's calling our party members monsters. Uh, and it might be because of what they can do, which we'll see later in the trailer, which is really cool. Monsters. So we've got a um Kevesmek? Kevest, I don't know how to pronounce that. I think that's land speaking. Um and you can see that she sees them as like these weird demon like fog creatures. So I'm wondering if you're possessed by the fog, you can like see people's inner demons or whatever or their spirits or i guess the dark side of their spirits um what was i gonna say she's got like lightsabers <laughs> lightsaber looking things which are interesting not sure how much depth i'm gonna go in here but yeah you can see i really like her design she's really really cool looking so i think we can pretty confidently say I, I think there's multiple things that Ouroboros is the name of, but I think we can pretty confidently say that one of them is the party is called Ouroboros. So both nations are against him now. Um, for reasons we'll see later. So we've got another guy here with a red eye, and I think it's worth noting that there seems to be one of these, these people with a red eye for both respective nations. You have this guy for Agnes, and you have that girl from before for Kevis. Uh, don't know if that means anything. Okay. Yeah, we got confirmation of being chased by both nations. Uh, if we go back there, I am wondering if that... If that is the same girl as before. I don't think that's the same guy. I think he was blonde. Was he? I'm not sure. That might be the same guy. Um, but I, I think that's at least the same girl. She has the same long white hair. And if we have a look on the website again, um, we've had some artwork of her. It's hard to tell. I think it is the same. Okay, so... Battle. Combat. This looks... <laughs> so much going on. Uh, I'm just gonna... Yeah, just gonna talk about what we're seeing here. So I think the main thing is that you've got six characters, which is the most we've ever had. I mean, if you count drivers and their blades, mm, I mean, we did have that much, but it seems that they're all going to be interactable in some way. I'm a little bit worried about how chaotic this is going to be, especially with all the characters screaming their attacks. Like, it was already pretty bad in two. Um, but, I mean, yeah, we'll see. we'll see how that goes. You can see each character's class. Here, so we've got Noah and Senna seem to be attackers. 
Lands and Neo seem to be tank or defenders, and Uni and Tyon seem to be healers. But I think it's worth noting, we'll see later, that characters can actually change their class. So for example, if you wanted to, Mio can be an attacker, or um, Lands could be, although I'm not sure if you can change their classes outside of their tag teams. I know I'm throwing around a lot of terminology here, we'll get to that later. Uh, but I'm just going to talk at the bottom here. You've got, like in Xenoblade 2, mapped to the face buttons, I would guess. You've got arts, and it seems that they will fuse your special equivalent. Uh, we've got the chain attack thing here on the on the right, that's fairly self-explanatory. But what's interesting about it this time is that it fills up on, a, on like a meter. There's no segments. So I'm curious how reviving party members is going to work. Uh, it might not be clear how much of that, I guess, energy reviving will take. Uh, but it's interesting nonetheless. You can see side break here. So what does that mean? Does it mean it only applies break if you do it from the side? I'm not sure. On the left here, this is what I'm really curious about. What is this about? So interlink, we'll see interlink later. That's a very interesting uh, feature. But you seem to have free additional arts, um, which is interesting. And I'm wondering if these arts let you control the actions of the other member of your tag team. Uh, so Noah would be in a tag team with Mio, I would assume. Or maybe it's of the member of the same class. So maybe in this battle, he's in a tag team with Senna, if you can do that. So these arts would let you control the actions of the other person in your tag team or your duo uh, during a battle. It could be that. That would be quite interesting. Uh, also, fusion up here. It seems you can, like, fuse the abilities of different arts together, which is very interesting. Very strange, and I'm not sure what that's going to be about, but <laughs> we'll find out. You've got tactics here as well. I'm thinking this will probably be something similar to how there's options in the first two games where you can make all your characters aim on one baddie if you wanted to, or you can make them spread out or assign them to go to specific locations. And then finally in this shot, I want to comment on this in the top right, which I haven't actually seen anyone comment on. I'm really not sure what this is. It could be how many enemies you're currently fighting. It could be how many enemies you've defeated overall, although that would, I mean, I, I think that would be pretty arbitrary. To put it in battle like that i mean it could be um i'm really not sure but it does have that same enemy icon that they used for the difficulty where it showed the difficulty of different battles in the challenge mode in the first two games another thing oh, there's so much in this fucking trailer it's gonna take so long but another thing is that there's like these rings surrounding the characters which is interesting and i've heard that what these are is that for each like different class They'll have rings, and if you stand in those rings, you'll, they'll have a certain effect on you. So for tanks, you can see we have um, Mio and Lands of the tanks, and they've got these areas around them. And you can stand in these tanks to stand in the, the, the rings of these tanks to get some defensive abilities. And we can see on the right that indeed Noah is standing in it, and he has a little shield icon. Uni is just about standing on it and she has a tank icon and so is Tyon shield icon you know I'm just using shield and tank interchangeably um but it looks like a really really interesting feature and I think that's a really nice idea it it puts the priority on positioning even more than before and I, I really really like that um my worry is that with all these like circles it might get a little bit messy I mean we'll see I also just um, want to comment on this UI. I've seen a lot of different opinions on the UI. Personally, I really, really like it. I think it's really clean, a lot cleaner than the one in Xenoblade 2. I think maybe they could do with pushing them to the sides of the screen a little bit more, just so you have more space. Um, but overall, I just really like the way it looks. The final thing I'm going to comment on in this shot is this over here. This, this seems to be a humanoid. Like, they look completely black in colour. I have no idea what that is, um, but it, it's very strange, and I haven't seen anyone comment on that. Another thing, I know I said that was the end, but another thing we can see again, we saw in the first trailer, what looks to be one of the arches on Gower Plain. So we know that that area in some form seems to be returning. Uh, oh, and up here, it seems to be one of the things from Gormor or Uriah. So we see he seems to dash here, which is very interesting. Now, I don't know if 
that's just some nifty animation at the start of battle, or if you can actually, like, dash or dodge during battle, which I think would be really cool. I really hope you can, uh, but I'm really not sure. Oh, I think what those people were back there is they were, like, the drivers. I mean, I say I don't mean drivers as in the sense of drivers and blades and Zillade 2. I just mean, like, regular drivers or the controllers of these mech. So when you attack it, they they run in, um, it seems like. So yeah, we get a look at the combat here. It looks really, really cool. Love that the attacks seem to have so much punch to them, which I really, really like. And you can see you've got the brake meter here. Uh, so that seems to be returning. Here we have some gameplay of Mio in this, I guess, kind of swampy area. Not really, but um, you can see... What seems to be like one of the, the things of Gormot up here again. I, I just love how all the areas have all these different elements mashed together. I really love how the um, world design is looking in this. And I like that it's not just, if this makes sense, I like how it's not just um, separate areas. I like how it's not just you go to an area and that area is what Gormot has become. Or you go to an area and that area is what Uri has become. It's like all the elements of all the areas from the past two games are just interspersed throughout the entire world, um, which I really, really like. Anyway, we see footage of Mio, and as she is a tank in this shot, again, she has that ring around her. Um, and now you see something here as well. You see Mio has a, a buff of some sort. Uh, and if we look at, it seems that, it seems that that's this ring here. Uh, and so maybe attackers can create these these fields of effect as well, where if you stand in them, you do more damage. And it seems like that might be Senna, uh, or Noah, or I don't know where Noah is. It's interesting, nonetheless. Um, so, okay, so right there, I'm so happy, because I'm pretty sure that is the new form of cancel attacks. Cancel attacks were so fucking satisfying in Zenoblade 2, and I'm so happy they're bringing them back. That purple aura there. I think it's also worth noting that this colour purple is seeming more and more prevalent throughout the game. You've got the collection points we know are purple, you've got that, and then later we will see the Ouroboros forms of the specific tag teams which primarily use a purple or black colour scheme, which is really, really interesting. I mean, it probably doesn't mean anything, but it could be a link to Malos, or the, the Logos core of a Trinity processor, I mean... Probably wouldn't go that far, it's just the colour. You know, I mean, that's purple. You can make the argument that that has something to do with Malos. Uh, you know, but we'll see. We've got a look at, like, what seems to be one of the specials here. There don't seem to be any quick time events. Uh, they might have taken them out just to make the footage look cleaner. I really hope there are quick time events. I actually really, really enjoyed them. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so you've got this thing <laughs> it's so weird looking i like it though uh, it gives me kind of a you know that maniacal a bit mad villain vibes like in xenoblade one you have metal face or zord um gives me very similar vibes he seems to be an ouroboros of some kind which is interesting because we see the character tag teams forming into their own ouroboroses later so i'm wondering if this guy is actually like the characters will be in our party actually a fusion of two characters and if that is the case and it seems that the fusions need to be of one respective male and one respective female from Keves and Agnes this could be the fusion of this chick with the eye and this guy who also has an eye because it seems that having your eye be like a weird color is also linked in some way to the Ouroboros mechanic both in story and battle fucking terrifying I, I really love it i love his voice i think um now i don't know about you guys but his voice sounds a lot like it sounds a lot like three different characters it sounds like gort it sounds like metal face and it sounds like zord so i'm wondering if this could be that characters from the old games are kind of somehow being reincarnated as ouroboros creatures although if it has to be an accumulation of two or maybe even more than two we don't know souls then maybe this is multiple returning characters. Maybe this is half Zord and half fucking Gort. I don't know. There's so many possibilities here. Um, you 
fight scenes look incredible as always. We've got Ty on block, um, blocking lands. We've got the Van Damme character speaking again. Okay, here we go. Their souls literally come out of their body. Uh, and you've got the Ouroboros symbol filling up in his eye. Uh, and you can see the like drawings of Mio around him. Uh, so I guess when this happens, their souls are kind of linked. I would guess their life force is pulled together. If we're still going by the assumption that the clocks do tell you how much life you have left to live, um, which I think very well could be the case, maybe when you link to someone, your life forces get pulled together. It's like if, if this creature that you both are dies, you, you both die. Um, so we've got that they seem to be in each other's heads here. Their, their spirits are intermingled. I felt her thoughts. There were so many. I love the shot. The cinematography is so cool. Then they were a part of me. I want to go back a second there because I was, I was mentioning about the eyes of the characters before. And again, she seems to have a coloured eye on her right. I'm not sure if it's red. Um, there were so many. And then they were a part of And me. Noah has one on his left. So I think every Ouroboros pair, maybe before they become Ouroboros, or I don't know, um, but they seem to have corresponding eyes, uh, which is very, very interesting. How, how are you inside me? <laughs> that line, man. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, um, we got the, the first look at the Ouroboros forms here. I think they're really cool looking, but it does look a lot like the... Um, the mechs from, not the mechs, the legions from Astral Chains, so they seem to be taking some inspiration from those designs. So cool looking. Again, I said before that this has got a very prevalent purple colour scheme. So yeah, the key new thing here is that during battle, I guess if certain conditions are met, you and your tag team part partner can group up and become these <laughs> these... I don't know if I would call them mechs. I'm just going to call them... I call them Ouroboros forms. I think that's what the, the website calls them. Um, what was I, going to say? I do wonder if you and your partner and your tag team will be interconnected or if you can change between them um, separately if this Ouroboros thing. Like, I wonder if there's other things you can do which relate to each other other than just joining up to become this being. That could be what fusion is, and that could be what the, the arts on the left here could be, because those could be the abilities of the other person in your tag team. <laughs> the combat looks so cool, man. So now we're seeing each respective pairs or a Boros form. So here we have Lands and Senna. Oh, something I think is really cool as well, which I want to point out here, is that every Ouroboros form takes design elements from their respective duos. So for this guy, who is Mio and Noah, you have, it's hard to see in this shot, but you have like a ponytail type thing, which is taking an element from Noah's design. And you seem to have very pronounced ears, which is taking inspiration from Mio's design. It's a really, really cool little touch. And I really like that. And with them, I mean, the, the elements of their design that aren't as clear, but I guess it's just very bulky, you know, which reflects the fact that they're both um, bodybuilders, <laughs> very into weight training, I think the website said. So you have Take that form via a strong design. Tyon and Unis. So like I was saying with the other characters, the design takes elements from the respective Characters designs. So the thing here is the ears, these massive things, which wings, I guess, which reflect the the wings on Uni because she's a high end here. Uh, really, really cool looking. I think this is the fan service character, uh, but it's alright. I do really like this design. It's probably my favorite one. Really, really cool looking. Um, you see this in the back. Not sure where this is because this it doesn't have the markings. It it isn't clearly a Kevis or an Agnes structure like some of the others. Honestly, it's anyone's guess. But here we have the three main fusion forms. I do wonder if there will be more. Like, maybe you can link Noah to, like, Senna, for example, and then they would have their own fusion form. I'm not sure. I think it's also worth noting that these two Nopon seem not to be able to fuse. So you're going to have all these really intense action scenes with these guys fighting enemies, and you just got the Nopon in the back. I love it. Okay, here we got 
more gameplay of the um, uni slash tyon um, or a boros form. I love the way this looks. Like. It, I think it really adds an extra element to the battle system that it really needed. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the environments in the back as well. Really like the way the grass looks here. I mean, not too much to say. You've got more of those collection point orbs over there. Um, I can't clearly match this to any titan. Just a nice little grassy area. Here we have a desert area. Uh, I want to go back a second. And you've got these really cool plants. Um, I'm really happy we're getting a proper desert area. We didn't have a really like proper desert area like this until torn of a golden country this could be something to do with torna i know torna sunk but we know that there's some weird reality mixing shit going on maybe there's some weird time shenanigans going on where things that had sunk or were destroyed can come through time and be merged into this new world that would explain why the mcconis sword is seemingly there um i don't know honestly but yeah Ooh, another thing worth noting here there's so fucking much to talk about but another thing worth noting is that it seems you can't use these forms forever because, I mean, they do seem to be very powerful. You can see the health bar. It makes the health bar go down so quickly. But you have a bar here. It says warning, and I'm guessing if you exceed that, you, will, you won't be able to use it anymore, and there might be some sort of punishment. So I'm just going to turn this down because I don't know if you guys can hear me very well. Okay, this shot is really interesting. You have young Noah... Um, looking up at <laughs> uh, a planet which is seemingly coming towards this settlement he lives in. So what I think is going on here is this is the merging of the two worlds. This is the Xenoblade, the new world shall create it. So I guess the, um, the world which, the, the new Bionis and Maconis, let's call it that. Uh, and they must have built this settlement. Uh, and, I, and I say that it's a new Bionis and, Macon Bionis and Maconis because he's from Keves, and Keves is very clearly the nation which is made up of the descendants of the people from the first game. Uh, and you see this planet here, which is seemingly coming towards them, as I said. And I think this is all rest. I think that the worlds are fusing together. Uh, it must have been an absolutely in insane event to witness. I mean, I have a lot of questions. If these came to if these two came together, I still don't see how that would lead to Uriah getting severed in half by the McConnell sword. There's still a lot of things that don't add up here, but it's looking really interesting. Another thing worth noting in this shot is that time has stopped. It seems that time has stopped around Noah. Uh, and he is he is seeing all this happen with all these people frozen around him. This might be some kind of flashback, this might be him learning the truth about what happened. I don't know. This really could be a lot of things, and I don't know why time is frozen. It's so many possibilities, but nonetheless, it's a really, really awesome shot, and it gets me really excited about this game. Okay, we have Melia here uh, talking about how their their main goal is to destroy Ouroboros, probably because they see them as monsters, because they can, well, because they can turn into Ouroboros. It seems that they are going against the the system that has been set up in this world um with the two nations and maybe the divide between the two nations exists precisely so that people can't become Ouroboros because maybe that that is just too powerful and that's why the war is going on and the war must go on so that more Ouroboros can't happen and I guess destroy parts of the world so the party are going against that and that is why they are seen as such a threat they could lead an uprising of other people to come together and form their own Ouroboroses. You can see this massive sort of mech or robot thing here. Um, I mean, we've seen these before, but I think what's interesting here is this meter. I'm not sure if we've ever seen it filled before. Uh, a lot of people speculate that this energy is spirit energy of the dead. I still think that could very much be the case, uh, but yeah, we'll see. We have this... Um, We've seen this mech a bunch of times before in this like jungle waterfall area. And you've got Tyon getting shot out by it and then Uni saves him. You can see really clearly on his hand there that marking. I'm, I think some people weren't sure if, if Tyon had the marking before, but no, we know he does now. Hmm, very interesting. Okay, so we've got Nia, Nia here. 
it's obviously near man i'm not gonna <laughs> even entertain the possibility of it isn't but anyway you have this new character here which you know i say new but i think this is the same guy as we saw near the beginning with the red eye which is interesting because he clearly doesn't have it here uh, and he's got this like agnes weaponry here and he said what does he say That is my revenge. It's payback for Nimue dying with her wish unfulfilled. Okay, so I'm wondering if it could just be a character they chose to put it, but I'm wondering if this is a flashback of Nimue before she was dead. We have no fucking idea who Nimue was, um, but this guy seems to be one of the villains, I guess, and maybe he's driven by the death of, of her. Maybe, maybe she, oh, maybe she got killed by an Ouroboros form, and now he wants to destroy any Ouroboros forms because you know he lost someone to that I mean I can I can understand that that might be what's going on here um in any case I really really like her design she's got these interesting little things here I don't know what they are they remind me a little bit of the markings on Urian's nonetheless it's interesting and then I think it's also worth noting what the hell is going on with her hand I mean she looks like Elsa from Frozen no idea um but nonetheless really really like her design We've got this guy again. I love him so much. He's going to be a really, really great character. Um, but what he's saying is really interesting. It's a wild ride, this passage of fate. So he is directly referencing Zanza from the first game, whose obviously whole thing was he would always talk about the passage of fate, blah, blah, blah. And then the characters had to break the shackles of fate that he had them on and, and forge their own future. Uh... So I've seen a lot of people saying that because of that, because he knows this line, this guy could be, I guess, a reincarnation of an Ouroboros form of Zanza when he's being reincarnated. I don't think it is. It could just be any character that was in the Xenoblade 1 world at the time all the crazy Zanza shit was going on. It could be Dixon. It really could be Dixon. Um, he does have, I guess, a similar voice. Um... And I haven't seen people entertain that possibility, so it is very possible. And, and he was there. He was at Mahonis Court when Zanza said those exact lines. Another thing that's really interesting is this. There's like an infinity, or an eight, but I guess infinity makes more sense, sign on his, like, I guess. You, you have these on all the Ouroboros, like the Ouroboros, the cause of them. Uh, maybe that represents the fact that he has infinite energy. I'm not sure, but whatever it is, this thing seems to be very significant. Because we'll look at the website after this, but he is listed as... Like, like he's referenced in the main story synopsis. So I think he's very important. Got a new character here. No idea who she is, but she's got a, she's cute. She's got a cool little design. You have got um, Noah here. <laughs> really, really cool shot. Like, flying in the air. Like, what is going on here? Uh, and, and his, like, the outer part of his sword comes off and... You have this, like, silver saber, which looks a lot like Gominado, which is very, very interesting. And then, I guess, the outer parts of his sword, like, form around his head. It looks so much like Iron Man, man. It's it's so weird, but it's so cool. It looks just like Iron Man got there. No idea what's going on there, but it looks sick. Something I just noticed is, as well is that you can see what looks to be a another character up here. I'm pretty sure this is Mio's feet. <laughs> so she seems to be in this shot as well. Maybe they're all rising into the air and doing these these weird transformations. You've got um, Uni with this, I guess, massive weapon or laser beam or whatever being directed right at her face. I mean, she understandably looks very terrified. Why is my name on here? No fucking idea what that means, uh, but it's interesting nonetheless. You have this guy here, this little little guy with it providing a shield against this massive Keves mech, because they both seem to be of Keves. Um, he reminds me a lot of the Egg Guardian from Age of Calamity, funnily enough. Uh, I'm sure there's no connection there, though. Uh, something I just noticed as well is this character on the left. You can see she also has that insignia. Like, we have yet to see a single character without it. But hers seem to be different. Like, the red markings on her are different. No idea what that means, but it, it's interesting nonetheless. Uh, here she is, um, closer. You'll see her as an actual party member later, although the seventh party member seems to be interchangeable in that 
maybe you'll get characters you have for a limited time or who you can't directly control which take up that slot and and that character whoever that is will change throughout the course of the game okay this scene is probably the coolest looking in the entire trailer in my opinion it's so fucking cool you've got these this really sick looking um agnes mech dueling with this keves mech and then there's a bigger agnes mech in the background and i assume a bigger keves mech as well uh you see this this new character here fucking love his design no idea what's going on in this scene it's just really really cool looking a battle between the two nations i guess uh and it reminds me a lot strangely of the film series pacific rim no idea if you guys have seen that but yeah he's saying my way demands we fight i mean fair enough Uh, you see that same girl there, as in the start of her, at least I'm pretty sure that's her. Um, again, she doesn't have a red eye. So I'm thinking she gets corrupted or something, or maybe not corrupted, maybe she just forms an Ouroboros, because... Or maybe the Ouroboros is linked to the corruption. Maybe to be able to have an Ouroboros form, you need to be corrupted. Maybe your Ouroboros form is two souls in one body, but that body is of a creature which has come... That is, that is formed from the fog i don't know there's so many possibilities here and i do think that the fog creatures will play a role in some part uh i mean at the beginning she's walking surrounded by fog seemingly and at the end i think there's something about that as well the characters are surrounded by it anyway such a cool scene okay here we got the napon um <laughs> fair enough so what's going on over here some enemies of some sort on the, on the ground but anyway you can see the rest of the the party members okay now we've got more battle uh you have uni going up against this flying enemy uh and here's what well, i was talking about the seventh party member so here it is riku and manana but we will see in a minute that, that can also be different characters so that seems interchangeable i really hope we can customize the way this guy looks because i really don't like his haircut uh i mean <laughs> fair enough the, the background of this shot is pretty interesting. I mean, I'm really loving the way that this world is looking. Uh, but you can see this big, like, windmill structure, which reminds me a lot of some of the things in Machna. You've got this ruin of something here, which I can't match of anything from the first two games. But it just looks like a really, really cool area, and I'm, I'm really excited to explore this world. Okay. Here we see that characters can take on different roles which means that they can use other characters' weapons. And not only that, but they, they change into their outfits. I don't know how I feel about that. It's a little bit goofy looking. Um, hopefully there's an option to turn off turn off the actual aesthetic change, uh, but still have the effect. But the reason I say this is because like, you have, I'm pretty sure this is Lance here uh, in Noah's outfit. And he is an attacker and he is wielding whatever Noah's sword would be. And then you have Noah here, I think who is now a tank and is wielding his equivalent of Lance's greatsword, and they're fighting a blant enemy, which has returned from the second game. Uh, again here, you have... Wait, no, that's just Tyon. Never mind. Oh, but we have a new character here, Voldy, which I'm pretty sure is... No, no, if I look at it, I'm certain that, that that's the same girl we see. Here, that's Voldy. Uh, so she seems like she's going to be a, a character of some sort in the game. Oh yeah, I almost missed it. There's also another character called Zeon here. Uh, so another interesting one. Okay, here we have a look at what Chain Attack is going to be like. Very interesting. There's a, a lot going on here. Um, this on the right and tactical points and, and then these characters here. I'm not even going to try and figure out what's going on here, but it looks interesting nonetheless. In the background here, there also seems to be a bunch of floating islands, um, which is very interesting, and it matches with the key art that we got a look at the other day, with the, the floating islands near the top of the, the massive hole that's been gouged out of the Urian Titan. Okay, here we go. We've got him using Tyon's equipment and his outfit, because all the classes are interchangeable. I really have mixed feelings about that. Could be interesting. I get why they're doing it. They want more customization options. Hmm. But it would, you know, but there would probably be a clash between battle. You know, if he's using a defensive role, um, defensive role in battle, but then in a cutscene you have him being an attacker and then tie on, or, you know, lands taking on that defensive role instead, it might be a little bit, 
jarring. Uh, we'll have to see what that is like. Maybe they'll incorporate that into the cutscenes as well. I'm not sure. Here we have the um, Van Damme lookalike again. Surrounded by fog, as I said. So we have this reference to time again. I'm pretty sure that's Senna talking. She says, not that I have much time left, which could indicate that the um, clock idea that everybody has a limited lifespan, uh, that, that, is, that is true, that is the case. Although maybe that's only the case for Blades because she's very clearly a Blade. We have the Noah and Mio Ouroboros form here, and then in the back, you have the Senna and Lambs. Have her seemingly writing in a little journal, which reminds me of Bridget's character in Xenoblade 2, how she would write a journal which about her past lives, which she could read if she was reawakened. You've got these little motes of light in the air again, which I still think are the spirits of, of the dead in some way. I'm going to go back, there were a few seconds there I didn't quite comment on. Um, you can see he's like pressing on a some sort of Agnes weaponry or an item of some kind, I really don't know. But if you listen to the music I'm going to turn up, you can quite prominently hear that they've got the engage the enemy and counter-attack motifs kind of integrated into it, which I really, really like. Uh, I was a little bit worried that the music wasn't going to be original, but I actually like what they've done. It seems that the music is mostly original, but you occasionally might have the little motifs of little melodies from the past games, and I think I think that's the way to do it, and I really like that. There you go. Awesome, man. This this trailer has me so excited, and then we'll get a look at the collector's edition in a minute. You know, I'm so fucking miffed, right? Because, miffed, is that a word? <laughs> because you can see here, the art book is hardback. And I really want to get this collector's edition. I probably will. The art book is is um, hardback. Uh, but then I saw there's a slightly different version for here in the UK. And it's fucking paperback. It's like, why? It's, I know it's such an insignificant thing. But hard books, hardbacks are so much better. And it sucks that I won't really get it. Um, but anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at some of these websites and see what else we can figure out. This one is in Japan, so... Actually, wait, no, it's not in Japan. Okay, that's good. Um, but let's look at this first. So we knew all this. This is just about the characters we got from the first trailer. Okay, here we go. Here we have some stuff about the battle system. Got some screenshots. Like in previous games, battles start by facing enemies directly in the overworld. With six characters in your party, you'll need to use each soldier's strengths to your advantage, taking into account their position relative to the enemy. Characters you befriend can also join you in battle. So, characters you befriend. So that's like... I'm not going to remember the name. There was one called Voldy, and one called Zeon, I think. Okay. As you progress through Ionios, customise your party by changing character classes to better suit the situation at hand. If certain conditions are met during battle, each of the tag team pairs, Noah and Mio, Lanz and Senna, Uni and Tyon, can combine into a giant form called Ouroboros. Each Ouroboros has its own powerful moveset, and deciding when to transform can be the key to winning a battle. So we've got some screenshots here. Ooh, I mean, we already saw these shots in the trailer, but it's just nice to have them as high definition images. Uh, and then we're going to look on this site, see what we can get here. Xenoblade 3 is the story of... So there's going to be a lot of weird um, translation errors here, but yeah. It's the story of six young people who unfold in Ionios, where the magnificent nature spreads. Uh, young people from enemy countries go on a journey. The Ouroboros-sized Noahs dismiss the mysterious giant and survive. But this has led the six to be... Ah, so... Is it them getting away from this that led to them being targeted? Why? I don't know. Very strange. We got some shots from the trailer here. Like, these look so clean. I fucking love the way the characters look in this game. Here's a big thing. We finally have confirmation that that character who looks like Vandam is indeed named Vandam. 
Now, I've seen a lot of people saying it confirms Vandom's back. I mean, the Vandom from Season 2, and it does not confirm that, in my opinion. I think there was a staple that you have a character in every Xeno game, or at least every Xenoblade game, who is either called Vandam or at least some variation on Vandam. So for Xenoblade 1, it was Colonel Vangar, then Xenoblade 2, it was, you know, Vandam himself, and then this time we have Vandam again. And as for X, I didn't play it, but I have heard there is a character called Vandam in that game. Um, something we've never had before, though, is a character who has the same voice actor and who looks so similar. So it could be some sort of reincarnation. I think that's very possible, what with the theme of life. Got uh, some more screenshots here, which we'll have a look at. Very nice. Battle system. As is in the past Dune Blade series, the battle begins by confronting the enemies scattered on the field, and positioning is important. Six characters can be operated during a battle. So I wonder if you can swap between characters during battle. Still not sure about that, but yeah. Oh, I just realised something. This on the right here... It seems to be how many enemies you're currently battling. Maybe it's hard to tell with all the chaos that's unfolding. Uh, but you would have three because you have this and then the two pilots who go alongside it. We saw in the, the earlier shot. Gale fighter becoming a decoy. Oh, I think I'm pretty sure this is a new screenshot here. Uh, so that's cool. Oh. Just realized you can see um Uriah's head quite prominently in the background there, which is which is interesting. So they seem to be fighting a um Keves mech here, which I think is the same scene as when we meet that other new character. Oh no, that's not a new that wasn't new. Well, I was just talking about that here. Uh, but it seems to be the same shot as Yeah, it's this when they were fighting. Where the fuck's she gone? Yeah, 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 this scene. Uh, let's continue looking. Or is that all of them? I think that's all of them. Interlink, where two people merge. Oh, here we go. She is called Ethel. New characters. Um, Col Keves's Colony 4 military commander. So there's confirmation that we, we do have different colonies, which are actually the Iron Giants themselves, which is the name of a giant mechs. Uh, I'm not sure if they can literally transform into places where people can live and, and sleep and eat and such, or if there's just like camps set outside of them, which we do see in one of the shots. Here we have, see, I'm assuming that's the voice actor. Um, I mean, I know it's not VA, but here we have Isolgi. Uh, so that's the name of this guy. Army chief of Agnes's Colony Lambda. He used to be Tyon's boss, but now he's aiming for Tyon and his friends in the name of revenge. Interesting. Now, I wonder what he's trying to get revenge for. Maybe maybe Nimue, who was his lover, who we might have seen in that shot, if that was indeed a flashback, was killed by an Ouroboros form. And so, you know, he wants to take down any Ouroboros. Here we have this guy. Really love the way he looks. He is the chief of the army of Agnes's colony Delta, a user of a fiery long spear, which seems to be made purely out of ether, which is very, very cool. Here we have the Van Damme lookalike, or Van Damme. Um, again, they're being very vague with him. A mysterious man who appeared in front of six Noahs. <laughs> yes, it's not great, the translation, but I think we can get what they're saying there. And here we have this character, a mysterious giant. A giant who suddenly appeared in front of a hostile Noah and Mio. He overruns Noah and his friends with overwhelming power. Interesting. Here we have the two Nopon. Uh, Riku... No one of the Kavis army who acts with Noah and others. He is in charge of the mechanic. I do wonder if he's a descendant of Riku. With that name, it's very possible. Here we have Manana. No one of the Agnes army who acts with Mio and others. He is in charge of cooking and loves to eat. Oh, I thought it was a girl. Okay. Um, <laughs> loves to eat has me a bit concerned because I haven't actually played X. But I know that a lot of the thing, one of the things people complain about a lot is all the, the, the food puns with Tatsu, which are overused. And I know Tatsu is... It's very hated, uh, so hopefully that's not as much of an issue. So here we have, I guess in Japan they have a paperback version as well. Okay, I think I am going to end it here, guys. Uh, this is probably a really, really long video. I know it's been a while, and it might be a while before my next one, um, but I do still want to make videos. Just don't expect them anytime soon, because I have got quite a lot of stuff going on. Um, but yeah. Uh, independent of this video, I want to thank you guys all for a thousand subs, as I said before. It really does mean a lot. 
and I will see you all in the next one.